What's going on, everyone? Thank you for tuning in to episode, what are we on, five of Beacon this season. And this is episode two without our audio producer, so when he is away, we, we will play. On our show today, we're going to be talking about a little bit about the Pens broadcast situation, the Bill Peters mess in the WHL, the Keefe extension in Toronto, and we're playing some Puck Doku for the majority of the show. How are you guys doing today? We love it. I'm good. I'm good. Still on. If uh, any, if any keen-eyed viewers are noticing uh, Lance's screen and my screen, it's the morning when we're recording as opposed to at night. <laughs> so you see a nice sun glare over here. I thought you were gonna say if you're noticing Chris's screen, he's got a margarita. <laughs> yeah, that's no. Cool. This is in this is my Jimmy. famous. Rest in peace, Jimmy Buffett. R.I.P. Jimmy Buffett. Rest in paradise. Uh, no, this is a blue wine. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Nice. Uh, all right, so we'll get right into it. So blue Leafs, we'll, we'll kind of, I'll use that as my segue. Listen, this is this is what we're recording on a Monday. This is going to be a very low energy show, but we're, we're having a nice. It's ten thirteen on a Monday morning. Is we're I having say a nice time. relaxed show today. We're just going to have our producer, half uh, part of our staff is in here, so we're just rolling. So we'll start with the Leafs and Sheldon Keith. So uh, Leafs extended Sheldon Keith. I believe it was a two year extension. Um, he is currently, amongst all initial coaches, the most winningest, I believe, in the past few seasons. And of Leafs coaches, he is the highest winning percentage coach. So, um, I guess we'll start, uh, Mr. Lance, with your blue, blue, what is it, Blue Hawaii? Yeah, Blue what's, Hawaii. Uh, what's your take on the Keith extension? Well, I mean, of course there's a part of me that's like, I wish he would do more. But he does have a good record so far. Um, he did get them past the first round of the playoffs, um, or at least he was the coach while they did it. I wish he would take a bigger hand in getting more energy into that dressing room. Or, yeah, whatever. Um, I wish he'd take a bigger hand in getting that in, just because it seems like... Um, it seems like Tavares is a very lead-by-example leader, and not a get-everybody-else-pumped-up leader. Matthews and Martyr don't seem to do that either. It really seemed like this last year O'Reilly was the one that did it, and he's gone. So I would like to see Sheldon Keefe get his guys more energized and figure out how to get the leadership to get them energized as well. So overall, I give this whole thing a B. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll pass it on to I'll pass it on to Adam. Yeah. Um I don't know, there's, there's a part of me where I was a little bit shocked that Tree Living didn't decide to go with his guy right off the bat. Um, Quote-unquote, his guy. Um, I don't know, I don't hate the extension. I don't think that Keith was ever the problem in the regular season, but this offseason especially, they I feel like the Leafs got out of the first round despite some very questionable choices at coaching at times in the first round. Um, but at the same time, I don't know how old is Sheldon Keith. He's he's not on the old side. He's a little bit younger. He thinks he's in like his thirties or forties. He's not too yeah, old. Yeah, he's on the younger side. So it's like you you learn from them. Um, I mean, I think back to some other young coaches and me being Colorado. I remember back to Jared Bednar with some younger choices that he was making when he was first in in the league with Colorado, and he made some big mistakes and he learned from them. So maybe. Now that they actually get out of the first round, maybe Sheldon Keefe can learn a little bit from it. I don't know. Uh, I don't hate the extension because he is really good for a regular season coach. He just needs to also figure out how to get it done in the postseason too, just like the rest of Toronto. So, Adam, have you considered that similar to the rest of this offseason for Toronto, this is actually the guy in charge's guy. This is actually uh, Shanahan's guy. And Treliving yeah, just has I mean, to deal with it until I, it becomes – his problem. I mean, I think that that's why it's a two year extension is because I guess if you look at the coaching market, I think that the Leafs, if they went with a different coach, they'd want somebody quote unquote proven already for that spot. And who's available that would take that job in Toronto right now. I don't know. So a two year on Sheldon Keefe, I think is kind of like a, Hey, this is your last shot to do something. At least show me something kind of thing. 
It's a show me contract for him. If he doesn't do anything in these two years, I don't see him staying. If he does something with the Leafs, he'll be staying for a while. I uh, I bet you didn't expect a Jason State the reference this early in the morning, but I think this is what we call the Matthews ultimatum. If you line up the contracts, Matthews will be a free agent in that final year. So at least uh, Keith's final year at the Leafs will be Matthews' final year before basically entering free agency. So uh, before his free agent like showcase season. So it's going to be okay. We're three years in now because he has a year left on this one, and then he's got the two years coming up. It's we're here now. Are the Leafs a contender still? Or are they still making the same mistakes? And at that point, that gives Tree Living all the ammo to blow it up, trade the core, and fire the coach. So I think this is really just going to be a three-year show-me contract. doesn't really matter. I mean, the Leafs are probably going to get to the playoffs with... I mean, I'm pretty sure they can get there with a, an actual hockey stick as a coach. Like, they're just a good team. So yeah. realistically, I don't think it matters who's behind the bench. It, it's going to matter come playoff time. And that's the waiting to see. Can the core do it in the playoffs, and can he do it? And by extension, Tree Living now gave himself an extra bullet, which I think is a really savvy move. Because, yeah, like you guys said, this is definitely not his guy, per se. Like, I'm sure he liked Sheldon Keith, but it wasn't his hire. Now he's got a bullet before he goes. So we're full of pressures even on him. So I, I think it's a good signing. I personally am underwhelmed by Sheldon Keith. I think he's just one of those coaches who's a good motivator. Like, we don't cross sports thresholds too much here, but... I think back to, like, the Yankees with Aaron Boone. He's not really a good coach coach. He just knows how to get the most out of players, like, energy and how to be their friend. That's what they're looking for. They, I mean, who, what, what coach is going to tell Austin Matthews how to shoot better or Mitch Marner how to make better plays? You know what I mean? They don't need somebody, like, for lack of a better term, like a John Cooper to, to go through the X and O's. They, they just need motivation to be there every night and to show up every night. So we'll see. And I, I don't, like, give it a grade because it's just a – it's it's to me it's um it's a it's like a it's not a lateral move it's like a horizontal move it's just you're just you're moving the needle a few years down the road. Yeah, and I mean that's that's what I'm saying too. It's just that I think he needs to do more in motivating him. You know, you said they could get to the playoffs with a hockey stick. Yeah, they could win around with a hockey stick behind the bench. They they have they had that much talent. But I think Adam also made a good point that I completely forgot about, which was yeah, I remember him getting out coached like five out of six of those games in the first round it was you know i can't remember the number of times that i heard people that know more about hockey just sit there and go you know why when they're at home is john cooper still getting the line advantage on sheldon keith why i i think it's unfair i mean it's it, adam is right there i mean so it's it, it, it's a good point he did get out coach but again I mean, without thinking too much into where would you put Sheldon Keith in the power rankings? I put him somewhere in the mid 15s, maybe 20. I mean, he's not a great coach. He isn't. At all levels, he's never been that guy. He's never been the tactician. John Cooper, I mean, I've had my my fair share of critiques over him over the years, but he's got to be in the top five, like right now. And he's a, yeah, one of the better John coaches. John Cooper's definitely a top five coach right now oh, just yeah. because of how he thinks ahead of the game. And also, it helps the team that he has is definitely helping him every single night with it because they, they have a lot of good hockey minds down there in Tampa. You you have to think in terms of what, like, again, Sheldon Keefe is just kind of average. Like, in terms of the greatest coaches right now in the game, th think about who's at the very top of your, your pendulum there, right? You've probably got John Cooper's up there. Um, I always throw Mike Sullivan up there. Jared Bednar's up there now, and I've, I, I've been a critic of his over the years, but I'll, I'll get to why in just a second. I think Bruce Boudreaux has been there for a long time. And um, uh, Dallas, who's Dallas's coach? I couldn't tell you, but the fact that they've been there for a while and you don't know the guy's yeah. name, he's definitely not a problem. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think he's just one of those quietly. And I also would put uh, Vegas, uh, I, I'm just, his name Bruce is Cassidy. Right. Bruce Cassidy. No, mm. he's. In, oh, yeah, no, Bruce Cassidy, right. Thank yeah, you. He yeah, he was a Bruce first Cassidy. year coach with them this yeah. year and won the cup. Because and he's got his, and and he's got his tenure Boston. with Boston. Boston even let exactly. him go. Because, yeah. And again, why, though? Because you have to have, th in my personal opinion, you have to have three things that make you a, a great coach. You have to be able to coach stars. And that means dealing with their egos and dealing with their slumps and then getting the most out of them when they perform the best. But you have to be able to coach the rest of the guys, the players who are grinders, the players who are checking forwards, who are power play specialists. And then you have to be able to coach both good teams and bad. So if you can coach through... 
teams that are phenomenal, like I think back to Sullivan with the 16 Penguins, and yet you're still getting the most out of them, that means your your message is not going stale. Like in 2022, yeah, did he mess up a little bit? Sure. Think about Jared Bednar. He, he coached the... Who's your AHL team? He coached the AHL Avalanche. Like, he, yeah, he he was a he's the only head coach to win an ECHL championship, AHL championship, and Stanley Cup. He was the Colorado Eagles head coach right before uh, Patrick Waugh said, "F you guys, well, see you later." No, I'm, I'm saying he coached. Well, yeah, but he also he coached the Colorado Eagles this this season too because that's all they had was the yeah, Colorado Eagles. Right? They're, so, half, the, like, half the season, half their team was Colorado Eagles players. And when you think about Sheldon Keith. He was, now I don't know, I think he was a Sue Greyhounds guy, which I mean, chalker there, right? But I think he was a Sue Greyhounds guy, which Sue is always a good program. He went to the Marlies. The Marlies are literally one of the best AHL teams of the past decade. And now he's at the Leafs, who have one of the best core five, core four available. So, I don't know. I just think he, this is his measuring stick too. Like, this isn't really his job for the Leafs. This is his audition for his next team after the Leafs. You know, is he going to be a guy like Jared Bednar, who maybe started off like a little bit weaker, and then got better as he got older, or is he going to be somebody like uh, the Detroit coach pre- previous, like Willie Desjardins or whatever that was, like where he just he had all his potential, had good teams up until when he actually had to prove it and then fell off. I don't know. So, fair enough. Are, are we going to lay the key to rest? Uh, yeah. Here? Okay, we'll move on. Okay, about Sheldon. <laughs> All Good right, luck so to him. That's all I got. I don't really want to end our new segment with the bad news, so we'll 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 do that now. So, um, just to preface, this week the WHL Lethbridge Hurricanes hired Bill Peters as their head coach. And uh, if you don't know who Bill Peters is, it's he's not worth your time. But we we have to spend a little bit of time on it. Um, if you're familiar with a, a couple of years ago, he was the Flames head coach. He uh, he left the Flames pretty acrimoniously because when he was with the Blackhawks organization, um, there was a player, Akeem Alou, who was a black player, who he repeatedly fed racial slurs to, um, just condemned his music choices, called him racial slurs, and then there was a letter written to the Blackhawks front office at the time telling him, telling him, don't bring this guy up. Don't take this guy anywhere, basically taking him out of the NHL. And um, essentially, there were four GMs there at the time, four future GMs. You had um, Mark Bergevin, uh, you had Kevin Shoveldayoff, um, and you had two more, Rick, Rick something. I mean, there's, there's, there's four GMs in that room that that's five NHL teams that wouldn't take this guy, and it kind of ruined his career. Now he's back, and he's with the Hurricanes, so um, I guess I'll just flip it over to... Chris first what's your thoughts I mean my thoughts are similar to when we've talked about other Blackhawks issues in the past is that if the NHL wants to move forward and become a league that competes with the other major leagues in North America um, then I think they need to I don't know it's hard I was going to say I think they need to make sure that he sends an apology to Akeem Leo. Um, it's also difficult because this isn't the NHL making a decision on this coach. Um, so I think, you know, the words that I were going to have are going to be completely mute at this point. Plus, we can't force uh, an apology out of him just for media publicity because it's not going to be sincere. You know, I think uh, with the, the recap that you went over of his actions, that's beyond even a uh, apology. You know, I think there could be a case for... Uh, something akin to defamation. How much sooner could Akeem have been in the NHL if not for that letter? Um, how much, uh, how much verbal abuse did he have to go through um, just while playing for a hockey team? You know. So I just—it's a shame to see that you know hockey leagues, NHL or no, uh, just will not look past people that have a, a problematic history. They will continue to go back to these guys because, oh, they win. Somebody else is going to win too. Stop letting the bad people be the winners. I, I think that's all I can really say on that without going into territory I don't know. Stop letting bad people be the winners. Simple as that. Adam? I don't, I don't think I can add anything else to that. 
Um, yeah. Besides the fact that he really screwed over one player's career just because uh, he didn't like him for whatever reason, racially or not. It, that's terrible for any player, let alone when you're dealing with that in this day and age. It's, it's stupid. Like, seriously, you, you mentioned about how it hurt his career. It, it affected his career so much because, like, uh, if anyone who doesn't know, AHL players are paid almost nothing compared to NHL-level players. If this guy was able to prove himself as an NHL player, he's making at least triple the amount of money that he would be if he was just sitting inside of the AHL organization for Chicago. That's a lot. Mm. That's just another thing that he screwed him over on. So... I'm and, not going to waste my breath on the guy. He doesn't deserve it. I hope the rest of his career is nothing. And now you're putting him in another developmental league? Yeah. I hope the rest of his career is nothing. I wish nothing but bad things on him. Congrats. Yeah, and, and I think back to your comment, Chris, um, he really wasn't a winner either. Like, this wasn't like a situation where this guy was so good that he was, like, he had to be hired. Like, he, with the, with the, with the actual Hurricanes, he wasn't that great. With the Flames, he wasn't good at all. So, I don't know what the desire... Like, I understood at a time when the when the Jackets hired Mike Babcock. Like, I, I got it. And Mike Babcock, yeah, kind of shitty stuff. But really, in the grand scheme of things, we're comparing them nothing really in the context of that. So, I think back to that. I'm like, okay, well, it seems like Mike Babcock, at very least, did his, did, did his progressions through the apology. Bill Peters has yet to formally apologize to Akeem like, he hasn't written him a letter, he hasn't said anything, he hasn't tried to contact him, he has his number. And I was listening to the Jesse Blake Sports Report through the Steve Angle Podcast Network. And this week, uh, he had on Julian McKenzie. Now, Jesse and Julian, they're, they're both two, um, they're two black uh, gentlemen as well, so they kind of have a different nuanced take on this. And Jesse made a really good point. He said, if you think about it, how would you feel being a player of, like, a, like the BIPOC player in that locker room of the Hurricanes now? Would you feel comfortable? Would you respect your coach? He's like, I wouldn't respect my coach if I knew that's what it was, and I don't blame him. I mean, how could you respect somebody like that who really hasn't done anything? All he's done is go to the KHL for two years and coach. That's the only thing Bill Peters has done at that time. He had a, a, a press conference where he knew he was losing his job, so he, he got he publicly apologized in a very general way, and he reached out last week to basically use another coach, and a current NHL coach who is not named, to broker an apology between Elu and him. And he, and I mean, it, and uh, Akeem Elu's response, which I do just want to touch upon, he did say he appreciated his coach reaching out. He knows it's not his fault. He's just trying to do the right thing. Um, it's just, it seems like Bill Peters is, is like, here's the point, and Bill Peters is everywhere but on the point. So, I don't know. Yeah, he's checking he's, a box. He doesn't deserve another chance. He wasn't very good. And if we're going based on record, I mean, if we're going based on record plus your own personality, I I would never hire him. And now you're putting him in a junior league with and the, the guy who owns the team is his buddy is his buddy. And the league president basically said, Yeah, it's alright. I mean, he did his work. So this is why nobody respects the WHL. This is why the WHL is quite literally still the outlaw league of the junior circuit. And this is why players like Connor Bedard getting out of there sooner is a lot better. So that's my take on it. I don't think he deserves any more time. We're just gonna move on unless you guys have something more to add. There we go. All right. Now on to something a little bit more fun. Um, actually, I, I find great joy in this, not because they got fired, but because, uh, well, the Penguins broadcast booth had a bit of a shakeup. Um, as you probably know, there's a whole mess with Diamond Sports and uh, AT&T Sportsnet and all that stuff, all the stuff they own. Basically, they're going bankrupt. They're cutting channels out. Um, Root Pit was one of them, which is now AT&T Sportsnet Pit, which is no longer. The Fenway Sports Group bought them, so they immediately... Got rid of Steve Mears and Bob Airy. Now, Bob Airy's been in the booth since uh, Crosby was a rookie. And Steve Mears took over, I believe, uh, six years ago from Paul Steigerwald. Th they were quite literally bottom five in the broadcast team. And I like Bob Airy, but his, his message went stale. And Steve Mears is like a robot. So I don't take great pride in them getting fired, but it, it'll be nice to have somebody who is not monotone in that booth. Um, and I know you're really not a big... Penguins broadcast guy, so I'll, I'll defer to Chris Lawrence here. Any thoughts on this? I mean, uh, for what it for what it's worth, um, I did have to look up a whole bunch of, you know, highlight packages to go back and really listen and be like, what what was I missing? Because I've bounced back and forth uh, with my previous job and driving around a lot. I would bounce back and forth between the radio broadcast and the AT&T Sportsnet broadcast. Um, so the radio crew also gets messed up in my head with a TV crew. Um, and just to go back and listen, 
you know, uh, in a lot of those highlight packages, I didn't really hear Bob Airy a lot. Um, now, of course, that could just be because it's really intense stuff and Mears is just trying to make his, you know, make sure he's keeping his play by play up to date. Um, but even with Mears' play by play, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's anything exciting. I've watched other uh, networks, you know, Adam and I have watched a couple of Habs games together, so I've been able to hear those going. Um, and of course, other playoff games that would come up. But the one thing that I did like about Mears um, was whenever the Penguins get scored on, he is doing his play-by-play, what he has to do, but you can also hear the disappointment in his voice. And that was that was something I really liked, is every time, you know, and they score. It's like, yeah, no, I, that's how I feel. <laughs> you're trying to keep it up, Pete, but you're also really disappointed. See, I love the announcers that uh, just, like, throw their voice to know that they're upset about it, you know? Like, they're in the middle of something that's all energetic and just, and score. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I don't know. I might just be biased because I've been listening to them for a while, but Colorado's broadcasting team, both TV-wise and radio-wise, are pretty entertaining. If you ever think about it, listen to it. I don't know. I really like their radio, <laughs> radio voice, Connor McGahee. He's, like, my favorite radio guy in hockey. Uh, their TV crew of Mark Mosier and the, all associated crew is really good. So, like, when you have a good broadcasting team, it really adds a lot to the game instead of just, like, yeah, watching, I'm watching, and you zone out. I don't know. A good announcer is, like, half the deal for making hockey enjoyable, especially when you're listening. It's, like, it's like 90% of the job is making it sound good. Well, and yeah, and like I was saying with not really hearing a whole lot of Bob Airy in the highlight packages I was watching – as a color commentator, you know, I feel like I should remember you more than I remember the play-by-play guy. When I'm watching a game, you're the person that's keeping me interested, and the play-by-play guy is just keeping me up to date on who has the puck. You know? So I did see one of the articles I read um, had said something about maybe they can bring in um, Getzoff, who does the radio broadcast for Pittsburgh, to be one of the new people. Um one of the things I was concerned about when I first heard about it was, oh my God, are they keeping Dan Potash? Um, from what I've heard, Potash is staying, which, thank you. <laughs> That's one that I think would have made a lot of people upset was if you got rid of Dan Potash. Um, and I also saw people talking about Colby Armstrong um, being another person that could uh, that could fill in for that new broadcast. I, I saw that. Yeah, so uh, the, the people who are safe is... Colby Armstrong, uh, Dan Potash, and um, Josh Getzoff, and then Phil Bork. So okay. I really, yeah. I would love to see a combination. Uh, if you can't bring in an outsider, like I think it would in Seattle Bob and John Forslund. I mean, there's nobody like John Forslund out there, but that would have been sick. But if you can get a combination of Josh Getzoff in the booth with Colby Armstrong, and then have you know your Potash do your your inner uh, your inner half segments, and then if you can get Phil Bork to do the radio side of things, that would be great. I know he's been kind of training for that. Um, Josh Getzoff has a great voice for the game. He's a Pittsburgh guy, but he's got energy. And Colby Armstrong would be a great color commentator because he's phenomenal. Like when he does spin chicklets, when he does the NHL hits. I mean, he's just, he's really good, good energy. Um, would love to see him in the booth. So hopefully they figure that out because they, I mean, really, they truly, they can't get much worse. And that's not a shot at the, the previous cast. It's just who they are. I mean, Steve Mears is a Pittsburgh guy, but that's the only thing he brought. So, yeah. Because I didn't think Mears was terrible, but I think there were people that you know could do could do better play by play. I mean, like, I I, I mean uh, he just passed Rick Jenner, but I think about like if we can get somebody like Rick Jenner, you know, like the Mayday call or like I said, John Forsland, really anybody just to kind of take over. Uh, when it was Staggerwald and Airy back in the day, it was a great pod, uh, great um, performance, but it was just like, yeah, yeah. You want to know uh, the current Colorado TV commentator crew right now I think, for their... I, I was going to ask you, one of them's a former player. Uh, two of them are former players, actually. Uh, in the TV booth, the main play-by-play guy is Mark Mosier, um, okay. but their TV crew consists of Mark Raycraft and John Michael Lyles. John yeah. Michael Lyles is on the Avalanche broadcast. <laughs> Yes, Why? he's on the Avalanche Altitude uh, broadcast. He's not like a main game guy. He's like in the 
studio during intermissions and stuff talking about the game. And before he took the job as the assistant coach for the Kings, I think it was the Kings, Adam Foote was there this season. Yeah, that makes sense. But John Michael Michael Lyles even play for you? Yes, he did. He used to hold the point record before Tyson Berry broke it for defensemen. I literally, my my knowledge of John Michael Lyles. John Michael Lyles spent like a good half of his career in Colorado. I think he was drafted by Colorado. He's my most common puck to who defenseman guess, too. I should have known that. Oh, I'm gonna add yeah. that one. If you see if you see Maple Leafs and Abs, man, John Michael Lyles, what a dude. No, if I see Maple Leafs and Abs, I'm going Jeff Finger. True. Better than an Alex Kerfoot answer because of recency bias, but anyway. Uh I right, oh, so, Kerfoot would have well, been a good the one. News, the news segment of the show is done. Who's ready for some puck doku? I know you Before two are. Before we get away from news, we are going to talk about it more when there's more information out. But congrats to the BWHL for getting yes. announced as an official league. But besides cities really being named, and Amanda Kessel saying that she's taking a step away from Team USA Hockey to focus on the creation of the BWHL, there really isn't any news yet. So, congrats. Yes, so we'll have more on that. Um, should be nice to have a finally sort of. Uh, you know what's like, a big like, deal with Gary Bettman, Yeah, you know what's a big deal when Gary Bettman's finally giving them tips for starting the league because he never gave it before. Because he said in an interview that he was never going to give them advice for a league that he thought genuinely was going to fail. So they at least have the NHL commissioners backing that he thinks that they're starting it right. So that's cool. If the NHL is smart, what they'll probably do is in a couple of years they'll probably try to acquire them, which that would be smart yeah, because I that mean, would be smart. You, the BWHL is already a big deal. I know they like they, they make a good amount of money, at least in the in the bigger markets of Toronto. I know they're pulling a decent amount of money, so to get some stars in there, it'd be good. Yeah. All right, let me pull up the stream here. Stream time. Let's so, Puck Doku. I see a Sam Lafferty answer. God bless. Of course. I mean, it's Why me. Why is his name Yevgeny Malkin in here? Nobody has ever called him that since he was with Magneto Gorst. Maybe I don't know. That. You guys, I don't know. Right. Yeah, I don't know how many like modern you really players you guys put nine, in. Dude. You went nine for nine, and you had a not terrible uniqueness score. That's Again, right. this is the only reason we're doing this one is because I know I can complete it and compare it to you guys. So yeah. Oh, okay. We're doing this one. Oh, we're. Com- oh, what, we're what day is this? One? What day is this? Uh, August, August 30th. 30th. We're if we a couple if, of them because we're, we're Chris. What are we in? Like twenty minutes in? Thirty minutes in? Uh, something like that. I'm gonna cut the last yeah. couple minutes. Um, at least the video of it. Just Let's to... see tonight. Oh, I already know my first guess. Yeah. So if you guys, I need to pull it up. I need to pull it up. If you guys wanna do yours, um, I guess right, I'll do I'll this one again, mine. and then we'll I mean, find one that we can do together. Score already. Um. Well, Chris, I have a unique score of five for this one. Are you sure you wanna do this one? <laughs> I have a unique score of thirty-one. Are Listen, sure? I know because I know I'm not right. beating you guys on uniqueness. Can we all do? Right. Uh, I I don't know if I want to do this one because the OHL. Uh, we can, well, we can. Well, we already have this. actually went down. I'm still at five, so I mean we I can mean, do this I one. From, I went from like 34 to 31 because a couple people drop below one percent. It doesn't count it if, if you drop below one percent for anything. <laughs> I mean, do we just want to have Chris play his and then we can compare ours? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll fill this back in. See uh, how much I remember. He or I can try picking. Eyes. I can try picking different people. See, I know the thing I did. Is, uh, I, went nine I just said hi on my board. One. So what about that? that? I mean, I was nine for 41, but I mean. Yeah, Let's see, I, always get low, I always get low uniqueness scores, but you always get lower, but you spend like 30 more guesses than me. Because I, I, I hate looking at like, I, I hate almost looking at teams. Above 20. Yeah, I yeah, I'm, I, 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 I'm pretty, I, like today, if I didn't put Scott Gomez down, I would be somewhere in the 20s or teens, but yeah. Sam Lafferty, big shout. I wish I would have played him, but that was a point five for me. Alright, this was Calgary Edmonton. This is the only one this is the only one I know, and this was even after talking with uh You might want to put Adam his first name in since there's so many Smiths. I can't wait till we compare ours. Yeah, that one hurts. Oh, we're gonna do the same thing we did last time. We're gonna play our awards for um on yours as well so the audience can yeah, see. Yeah, so that they can see it. Yeah. I did use Mike Smith on my board, but not there. This is a little heads up. Let's try that one. 
All right, I think I think that was lower than Dry Sidle. Who which is who I had before? Just because of recency bias, probably. Who else played for the Flames from Pittsburgh? There's a lot. There's there's one big guy that you would know from their back-to-back cup runs. From their He's back-to-back cup deal. runs. He was yeah, not on the back. No, he, he was not. Oh, really? He was, he was on either team. Yeah, he got treated before that. Oh, I thought he was on the back-to-back. He was, but I guess, I mean, this, I guess this you could be, say he's a real deal. I mean, this would be a giveaway for Chris, but it, he was traded for Patrick Hornquist, so don't forget that. Straight up, Patrick Hornquist traded. Yeah. Oh, I don't think that's who I used before. We're gonna We're going to try that. No, wait. No, Bukestad didn't play for them. Who else was in the freaking Hornquist trade? God damn. There was only one person. Wasn't it Sevier? It was a straight up one for one deal. Was it Colton Sevier? It was Sevier? not Sevier. No. I thought nope. it was. I'll oh, give you one that once called him lazy. That helps you at all. And it's not Phil Kessel. I was going to say, when you said that, the only person that came to mind was Phil Kessel. <laughs> Dude, that man is chugging in hot dog juice while he's lifting the three Stanley Cup rings above his head. Oh, God. Who who did they trade for Hornquist? You might say he's the real deal. That's what Adam I said. I already said that as a yeah, yeah. yeah, unfortunately, that hint is not helping. It's a, It rhymes. I have him on my board, but not here. So you can... I have him on my board as well, but also here. That wasn't... Yay, that was the one. Hey, there it goes. Okay, so I was thinking of that one before you gave like I think the first time you gave the real deal hint, and then you said the Hornquist trade, and all I could think of was when we got rid of Hornquist, not how we acquired him. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Ugh. And then uh. Put a Hall of Famer here. Yeah, uh, I'm wondering if I'm wondering if somebody else will do better than Malkin did. Oh yeah, show. that's definitely better. Yeah, that's a good shout. This sure. is a, this is a really tough one, and I'm so proud of my obscure guess here. I'm really proud of my guess because he's lower than one percent. I'm probably just gonna fill them all back in the way I had them. Go for it. Listen, your unique score is gonna be better already. I think. I think you've improved significantly. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're definitely yeah, gonna be If you're gonna be sub one hundred, that's good. If you go nine for nine and sub one hundred, that's that's a good game at least. You know what, I like Marner. That's going to be one that kills you. That's uh, right. Yeah, Mitch Marner yeah, killed that's you. That's the one that was brutal. I like him. You have right, Codger in the I'll spot, by the way, in case you're curious. Yeah, I Codger. I wonder who else I can get, though. I had Codger I unfortunately, I, I was literally just going based off of who played in Toronto because I was like, yeah, Kyle Dubas probably brought him in because uh, he was familiar with him from being in Ontario. There's a lot of Calgary players who have played for Ontario. Just an FYI. Yeah. Like lot. current Calgary players? There's just a lot of Calgary players all time who played for the OHL. Mm, good to know. There's I know, I know who you put here. I remember who you put here. Hey, put, you yeah, put I remember this was Kadri. You know what? Uh, I think it's already going to be a better uniqueness score than I did last time. Somewhere here. Do it. Uh, That's a Kadri. I put Aginla in for the Flames Penguin. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, go ahead. That. You're about to hey, 118. Yeah. That's I so much better. I think my use is actually better. Yeah, my Do you, do you want to play Adam's board first for us? Sure. So to the fans, Chris had a 118 uniqueness score. Uh, they, they can see the full screen. Yeah. They're fine. Which is better than my old one, one which was 157. So. All right. It's a good so, thing we're doing. Oh, go ahead. Uh, my top left, Freiser, F R Y C E R. Forget his first name. Miroslav Freiser. All right. Yeah. Top middle, I had Colby Armstrong. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, top right, that's where I put Nazem Kadri. God, his face hasn't changed. <laughs> no, he's Nazem Kadri was just 3% in that spot. Uh, and I always butcher his pronunciation. That's pretty good. Steios. Steios. S-T-A-I-O-S. Steios. S-T-A-I-O-S. Metro Pistol. And here I put James Neal. And then I put Mike Smith here in this spot. How many Smiths have played in the NHL? Just put it in Mike Smith. A lot. Way too oh, many. Yeah. Oh, right. oh, wow. Uh, bottom left, I also put Yari Puri. 
I really sh- should have thought more and put somebody else, but whatever. That is a good um, guess, though. Yeah, but 13%, I could have gone lower. But anyway, uh, bottom middle, I had Ron Francis. That's a good and then, one. And then bottom right, I had Gabriel Laniscog. Oh, I forgot he played in the OHL. Yeah. Getting Drew Rangers, Captain. 31, nice. Yeah. All right, you need to score 31. I'm just making a note quick. And now for my board to get absolutely blown out of the water All by right. Chris. <laughs> no, it's my time. Uh, Top no, left no. for Oilers at, at Toronto, Mark Arcobello. A-R-C-O Bello. There he is. Penguins. My God, Randy my God he Carlisle. looks. He looks like a recent player. L-Y. L-Y? Oh, Randy Carlyle. Yep, there he is. For someone that lives near like a town called Carlisle, that is slander. I yeah. want I want my roses for this one. Walt Podubny. <laughs> he will bring up Walt Podubny in some POD. fashion. Yeah, I always there. forget. Podubny, there's a big 0% there. He is. Uh, give me Chris Russell. K-R-I-S Russell. I think I might just name this one the, uh, the Walt Podcast. <laughs> Redeems a Horna for the Penguins. Oh, please. very good. Love me some horny. Uh, James Neal for this one. And this is why I picked him here. Point seven. Yeah, that's fair. That's good. Duncan Keith, because everybody first he plays for the Oilers. That's true. Yeah, he ended his career there, right? Or yeah. Is Sergei still Gonchar. And Scott Stevens. Oh my god. <laughs> and that is a five unit score. It's a score. five. You see why I hate I playing against this guy literally every day. I feel like I am a top 1% Pug Doku player. This guy is top 0.1% Pug Doku player. And I freaking hate it. I've beaten him two days in a row. Though. Yeah, I beat him by one today. I beat him yesterday and I beat him today. Should we show him our boards from yesterday and today? No, I don't feel like let's do a new one. But you you won both. Uh, Just for record, he beat me. I played Scott Gomez. He did not play Scott Gomez and he was smart for not playing Scott Gomez. Also, you had a shout yesterday. I just want to bring up your one player on your board to hang out. Oh, yeah, let me go on the shout yesterday. Oh, fuck. Was it time again or who? No, it was. Oh, Gilchrist. I have no idea who Gilchrist yeah. is. Yeah, Gilchrist, <laughs> dude. I just... So... Uh, oh, yeah, Gilchrist. Really yeah, that quick, guy, yeah. Really quick, can you just pull up yesterday's board, Chris? Uh, yeah, pull up yesterday's. Give me give me one second. I'm just I gonna... Want... Yesterday. Because I want to show... My, my unique and score actually went down from yesterday. Oh, this looks like right, a... So oh, I remember looking at this what one. what I did. I gave myself a personal challenge, and Chris and I made it a rule that we are allowed to look up, like, uh, like trades to make sure that we were right on, like, that was involved in this trade and whatnot, because I knew players played for at least one of them, and I'm like, I know that they were involved in the trade, I just forget the landing spot or where they started kind of thing, um, as long as we have the player in mind already. So my personal goal here, since this game tracks the franchise... I wanted to put as many Hartford Whalers in for the Carolina Hurricanes as I possibly could. And I wanted to put as many Minnesota North Stars players in for the Dallas Stars that I could. So, Chris, you want to just fill out this board for me really quick because I'm proud of it. Yep. Top left, never played for the Hurricanes, but sure as hell played for the Whalers, Gordy Howe. Jesus. 5%. And then... Never played for the Hurricanes, my knowledge, but he played for the Whalers, Chris Pronger. <laughs> Forget his first name, but his last name's Lawton, L-A-W-T-O-N. Oh, Scott? He played for the... Yeah, Scott... Uh, no, no, no. No, 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 no he was a flyer. L-A-W-T-O-N. L-A-W-T-O-N. Oh, L-A-W-T-O-N. Yeah, Lawton. Not me looking yeah, at you, just Lawton. like, what the fuck? He That's played a w. For the, He played for the North Stars and the Whalers. All right, so let me make a note because I'm actually I'm gonna replace the Carolina thing with the Whalers. Yeah. Gordy Howe, 
and I'm and I know that it's awesome that only five percent of people have the same wavelength that I did to put that in. All right. But anyway, middle I had uh, I think it's Ryan Eaves E A V E S or Patrick Eaves. I forget which one is it. You've got uh, Patrick no. Murray and Mike. Oh, oh crap! I'm gonna go with Patrick. I'm gonna go with Patrick because. Wasn't Nashville yeah, like Patrick. a more recent franchise? Yeah, I think it's Patrick. Yeah, there yeah you go. it was Patrick Deans. My phone that. only tells me their last name. I have the board in front of me. Uh, but beer. anyway, middle, I believe it's Grant. Um, I forget his first name. I want to say it's uh, Tristan Grant. That's who it is. I knew it started with a T. Tristan, Tristan Grant. Tristan Jari. Uh, Gilchrist. Played for the Minnesota North Stars. G I L and then Christ. Yep, Brent. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, bottom left, I think it's Scott Gill, G I L L. Or it's. All right, let me put in Scott Hal Gill. Yeah, G I L L. Yeah, it's not Scott Gill. It might just be Hal Gill. Yeah, it's Hal Gill. Oh, no, no, no it's not it wasn't. Gill. Who was it? Is it Todd? Because it is just Gill. Oh, yeah, Todd Gill. There he is. Um, Ty McGinn, T Y E M C G I N N. Oh, R.I.P. Brock. Yeah. And we'll keep, keep going. going. And then bottom right, uh, I think it's Ulger, but I, I know that his last name is D A H L E N, Dalin. Ulf? Ulf. It's Ulf. Yeah. A 14. <laughs> a pretty good board. That's my that's my low. That was my low. <laughs> Chris over here with a five, like that's pretty good. You know, rookie pretty numbers because you're double digits, but <laughs> you're not, you know. It's... Uh, all right, Chris, pick us a game. We'll all play it together. Pick all right. Archive. Uh, Adam, pick a number one through five. Four. Chris, pick a number one through five. Three. That's seven. Three and a half. We'll do that one. Hey, what is this? July 31st. Yep. This should be a good one. I don't know if they track uniqueness score, but we can try 9 for 9. Are we doing this together as a group? Yeah, let's they do this do one together. Uniqueness. Yeah, this is oh, okay. this is tracking uniqueness because it was after July 25th. All right, I call bottom left already. Who do you want? Matt Nieto. Uh, that is Pittsburgh Penguin Matt Nieto to you. Wow, nice 23 points of mind right off the bat. Oh, man. 50 goals in a single season in Colorado Avalanche. I am calling Milan Hadou to the stage. Sorry. Yep. Milan Hadou. H-E-J-D-U-K. There he is. Yep. That is Rocket Richard winning Milan Hayduk. <laughs> uh, bottom middle, James Reimer. Please and thank you. I should say we James can't Reimer. do... Jonathan Bernier. We can't do uh, Jimothy Timothy yet. Yeah, no, because he hasn't played a game. All right, there you go. I did a whole row. All right. Um... <laughs> it's not like it's his favorite team or anything. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, this this board sucks. There's like no good unique this one's with some. All right. Uh, I top say if you Patrick Marlowe. Uh, Wait, did Patrick Marlowe play for no, the no, no, I'm thinking Joe Thornton. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking Joe Thornton. Uh, all right. Let me get top right. Top right. Let's go with uh, Phil Esposito. That's who I was thinking of, but I was like, he might not want me to do that one for uniqueness. We're not playing for uniqueness here. We're just trying to get nine. We're just for completing. Nine. Oh, We're all right. Nine nine. Fuck it, Thornton. Thornton all the way. Go to a Thornton. Um, hey, Brian Trottier get fifty goals in a season. Yeah, I put Trottier for the Islanders, and then I yeah. got one for the middle as well. I'm surprised I didn't have this one already fill in, uh, filled in. Let me get Franz Nielsen for the Islanders Red Wings. Good shout. There he is. Franz Nielsen. All right, these are the tricky ones. All right, uh, Detroit Boston. Oh no, that's not too. That's not too bad. Put uh, Tyler Bertuzzi. Oh yeah, yeah. I think Tyler Bertuzzi. Played. All right, yeah. And then for Isle Sharks, gonna be Thomas Grice. Yeah, that's a good shout. Wow, that board sucked. Yeah, that was a nine for nine. Two forty-one. Yeah, nine for nine. 
Um, I didn't track the time we started, but I can't imagine that took that long to do. No, that was have. like that was like yeah. One more right. for the road. Yeah, let's do one more to compete each other. All right, oh, we'll we're do competing against each other. Oh, brother, that wouldn't take yeah. longer. Oh. No, yeah, let's just do yeah one for the road. Pick a, here, let's do August thirtieth. Make it simple. Or sorry, August eighteenth. August eighteenth. My apologies. Oh, that was uh, my dad's birthday. Clear the board. All right, I've uh, got but... one. I'll, just, I'll take the bottom row. Oh first. no 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 no! All right, so here's another one. You guys complained about Yevgeny Malkin. Look at Sergachev. Oh yeah, it's spelled kind of weird. <laughs> it's yeah. just Russian. Also, right. shout out Trevor four, Daly. Four, four. I've got bottom bottom, so I've got bottom middle for us. Let me. Oh, let me do that. Okay, let me let me grab Pierre Larouche for Penguins Rangers. Oh, uh, R -O, yeah, yeah, Pierre Larouche. There All is. right, we're on the board. Look at that. Uh, let's see. Are we going nine I mean, for nine? Is that we're trying to do? Because I'll just fill Pavelski back in. Uh, hey, Dallas Stars Stanley Cup winner Brett Hall. Oh, hang on. So my, my proposition now is we just do a round robin, almost like draft picks. So, Chris, the next pick's yours. All right. Um, let me go with... I don't want to screw this up, but I, I, don't, I want to have a low uniqueness score. Hold on. <laughs> hang on. Um, I know who I want. <laughs> all right, let me do Penguin Stanley Cup winner. Yeah. You bitch. Let me do Tom Kunakle. Oh. <laughs> oh That's there a great one. <laughs> I want Tampa Bay Stanley Cup winner. You fuckers, stay away. <laughs> I want Vincent LeCavier. Oh, I'm gonna need more of his more of his name. LECA. LECA. LECA, yeah. LECA. Okay, there it is. Hey, oh. All right, so it's mine. I'm going to be stuck with one either way, so. Let's just get back in here. I know there was Benito, but wasn't there somebody else? Not Benito, for sure. No, oh, he yeah, hasn't played a game yet. Game oh, not yet. yet. Not yet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then Carlson for the same exact reason. Granlin. Yeah. Granlin didn't play yet. Yeah, I yeah. think Benio's probably your best show. Yeah. Well, you could go anti Niemi there, but I think Benio's probably better. Yeah, it's the only one I'm uh, going to know. Yeah, so, have, uh, Chris, back to you. Oh, it's mine? Yeah, it's okay. Too. Let me do Rangers and Lightning. Of course. Uh, I'm between two. Do I go Barclay, Goudreau, or do I go Ryan McDonald? Let me go Barclay, Goudreau. I could have gone Broderick or Jeremy's too high. Barclay is. Goodrow, there he is. Yeah. I'll take it. All right, now who do I want? Sharks, Lightning, or Rangers, Stars? Oh, I'm stuck a little. You think you're stuck? Um, Those are two spaces I didn't have filled in the first time I did this. That's true. I'm fucked either way. I don't think I'm going to help you guys. Wait, what Rangers? What's our first? I'm trying to think if I can help you guys at all with this one. Mm. Oh, I think. Oh, I don't know. Did he play for them? You guys are been, it, Like, oh man, I don't know. I feel like Rangers Stars is a better one for me to try to get. Hmm. It'd be doable. Trying to think in general. Always play Cylinder Doku. <laughs> Good. The Cylinder oh, play for the stars. What do you What do you mean? This is the easiest one of all time. Who cares about uniqueness? What? You're, Am I just you're... overlooking a really obvious dude? Yes. Oh my god. Was... Who? What was the first player Doku we did? I don't remember. Yager Doku. Oh, Yager played for duh. the stars. Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, he did. For a hot minute. Put Yager There's in. There's an option for you. Yeah, Son just put Yager in. Alright, Chris, you're you're the Lightning and the Sharks. Yeah, I'm I'm looking up both rosters real quick. 
my initial thought is Dwayne Rollison, but I don't know if he played for the Sharks or not. Because again, like for you guys, I imagine this is easier because you've been around long enough that you kind of have a good idea of uh, you have a good idea of players that have played before. You've you know enough history to think of them as well. I go almost entirely off of like modern vibe. Well, I ever played solved by roll of indulge my brain with hockey oh, statistics. So, who's the who's your guy? Uh, Dan Boyle. Dan Boyle. And Boyle? Oh, and if I didn't take Markley Goodrow, so you could use him here too. See, I wasn't sure one. if Goodrow played for the Sharks or not. Dan Boyle might be a low score. That's it a shout. It might be. It might be. I remember That's Dan Boyle as a shark more than a lightning. Dan Boyle. Hey, look at that. Yeah, I'll just gonna take the 31%. Really? I'll take home the score. Okay. I'm surprised Yager Dallas isn't higher. Right. I think people forget that he played for Dallas. I remember that he played for New York. I forgot yeah, that he, he played for captain. Dallas. Yeah, he was a Rangers captain at a point. Well, Chris, I know you have to run, so do you want to end it here? Uh, Yeah, I've still got, uh, a, I've got a cake to ice, plenty more balloons to blow up. We're going to have a fun time. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday to my wife. Yeah. Uh, this video will be posted after her birthday. But All Ooh. right. Well, that'll do it for us today. Uh, hopefully next week we'll have the least of full suite back. But uh, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you give us a follow on all of our socials. It's posted on X. And uh, again, this will probably be a video only next Rip. For YouTube. Yep, be froze. Uh, yes, yeah, so this will <laughs> probably be YouTube only. Um, I forgot to get the sound Please off to him for Spotify. Don't worry, we'll do a slow, nice slow zoom on him. Um, <laughs> do we want to end this with, uh, as they say in Russia, because of all the misspellings they had of Russian names on Puckdoku? Hey, there he is. Hey, what do they say? In, what do they say in Russia, Chris? Uh, see you later. Mm -hmm. Your connection's been terminated. Goodbye.